And so I think that like examining why do you want the things that you want? Like are your desires yours or are they influenced by by other people? And and obviously we're gonna we're mimetic creatures, we're gonna like want things that other people want. But you want to minimize the extent that that desire is driven by other people and it's more because you like it and you want to do it. Um, and and so this this idea of like, are you examining why you want to do something? Yeah, and yeah. we had Excellent Sheep. That's, that's our favorite book to talk about on this topic. But um, from your perspective, Avtar, was was that a big issue where you saw people not taking the time to really sort of create that internal scorecard that uh, we talk about and like really figure yeah. out what is success for you? Uh, how Am I getting an A in what I actually care about as success? Or am I just getting an A in these, you know, computer systems classes that don't actually matter for me? Um, exactly that as an issue 100 percent. so while i was at princeton my favorite activity that i did uh was being a learning consultant and so what that means is you help uh, other students uh with things like um time management and goal setting and basically it's like you know if a tutor is helping you figure out like how do you uh, integrate and uh, do calculus and like the actual like methods of the subject we're more like at a high level about like okay how can you construct routines and habits and uh, making sure that like you're going in the right direction and that you have like the information and also the understanding of like, where do you want to go? And are you happy about like the way that you're getting there and, and, and stuff like that? Um, and so it was, I think the, the term that we use is like personalized academic and like lifestyle strategies. So that is, that is what it's about. Is Princeton one unique thing, in this? Sorry to jump in, but. Yeah, because I haven't I heard know, this actually. Brown. We didn't have it. We had like, like why do we have more learning consultants? <laughs> yeah, Mikkel I think it's, it's really wonderful. I, I it's one of the things that I again, it's like it's very natural to what I used to do because um, I would do this anyway, like with my friends. And like I remember when I met uh, the gentleman who runs that center at Princeton, he was like, we just we just got on like a like house on fire. It was amazing. Um, but but to your question about like do people take the time to think about what's important to them? Uh, the answer is no. And I don't think it's our fault. We, and I think maybe I'm interested in you guys because I had such a different um, background in the sense that like I was uh, taken to these different places and like I kind of had to figure this out for myself. But especially in, in if you're just like, you know, living in the same town, you go to the, the primary school, then you go to the high school, and then you got to go to college. And then you know, after college, you, there's, there's all these like checkpoints that are set up for you. And uh, not nearly enough people think about like, why, what is the reason that you're playing this game? And like, why do you want to do this? This is why you see a lot of students coming into college wanting to do things like pre-med and then they drop out after like organic chemistry or something like that. Because they don't really want it. They thought they wanted it, but they don't actually, they don't actually want to do it. And so... I think that like examining why do you want the things that you want? Like are your desires yours or are they influenced by, by other people? And, and obviously we're going to, we're mimetic creatures. We're going to like want things that other people want, but you want to minimize the extent that that desire is driven by other people. And it's more because you like it and you want to do it. Um, and, and so this, this idea of like, are you examining why you want to do something? This is, I, I saw this a lot when I was consulting, uh, students and they would talk about like, oh, I'm doing this really hard class and uh, I, I can give you, and and they were like, can you help me with it? And I said, look, I can give you tips and strategies for like how to do better in it. But before we get into that, I want to talk about why you're doing this class. Like what exactly is it contributing to in your, in your life? And they're like, huh, like I never actually thought about that. That's a, that's a, you know, they would say like, oh, this is a requirement for something and they're like a requirement for pre -med. I was like, oh, so why do you want to do pre -med? Tell me about that. And so once you get down this layer of whys and you get to like the core of, of what is your actual motivations for something, I think I have um, in, the, in the, one of the posts that I wrote about like finding your dream job, I talk about examining your motives and examining your motivations for like, why do you want to do something? Um, and I think that that's so powerful because like as much as those motivations can change a little bit, uh, at the end of the day, you have some like core desires that you want to fulfill. And some of these things are unconscious. So for example, some people, when I asked them, you know, why do you want to do pre-med? They would get into this whole story. So a lot of the time it was a kind of like therapy sessions because as much as we're supposed to talk about like learning strategies and like time management and stuff like that, 
it really gets into like once you understand your motivation and your core why for one you once why you want to do something everything else becomes easy because you have that foundation of like okay if i'm doing this for a good enough reason then that motivates all the energy that i'm going to put into um the different like systems and the changes that i need to make but if you're unsure at a at a deeper level about why you want to do something then that that like existential anxiety is going to uh, permeate the things that you're trying to do and ultimately you're uh not doing good at the class because you don't understand the material is because you don't not, you're not sure of yourself and you're not sure of like you know why you actually are doing this um and uh yeah and i think some people do have these good ideas but uh good um reasons and and good motives but i think that not nearly enough have, of us have made the time to think about that and i think that like for example failure and these things where we go through situations that we might not have wanted um so for example like when i went to the science olympiads like i i did well in the sense that i represented south africa and we were like the best students in our country but we didn't do well at the international stage we actually got like outclassed and outperformed by all these other people mainly because our curriculum is not that good but we were, we were just not at that level and so for me i i made the i i could have been like all demoralized and stuff like that and and i was to a certain extent but then i realized like hey like i really like this and this is my motivation for doing it and so i was used to like at these points of uh failure or at these like down points in your life using that as an opportunity to take stock and reflect and say like okay why did this happen is it a setback or am i actually like playing the wrong game and if you do find yourself playing the wrong game then switch to something else like for example when i when i was at princeton um i initially came in as wanting to do aerospace engineering and it's kind of like astrophysics where it's one of those things like it's literally rocket science like that and that's like all the yes. jokes about like Oh like it's not rocket science this actually is this is this is aerospace engineering and i wanted to do that because i saw i was very inspired by elon musk and he was doing stuff in spacex and he was also from south africa so i was like right i'm going to be the south african indian elon musk that's like what i want to do um and then thankfully like i got taken off that route by the fact that uh if you're not a us citizen you can't actually work in the aerospace sector say from i think maybe if you're like from canada even canadians i know some of my friends had issues with that but i was safe from that whole route because eventually i would have found out like why do i want to do this ah oh, it's because i want to be like elon musk and like what's the reason for that ah oh, so that i can have you know the respect and and adoration and the money and and be on the cover of forbes and stuff like that is this like the best way to do this ah oh, that's like the the real question and also like why do you want those things as well like why do you want the the money why do you want the respect why do you want like is is, is something about yourself that you're not quite uh, comfortable with that you feel like this is going to fulfill uh and so these are like the existential questions that i think we need all need to grapple with and um i think that like we all approach these like different breaking points and you even said it yourself like once you fail your maths exam you're like okay well maybe this maths thing um i if like for example there's some people that i know that if they enjoy maths and they're like yeah i just like doing it you know i don't care if I, like i'm not doing uh, as well as uh, other people in the class like this is the one thing that i enjoy uh whereas you know if you have these other interests and you're like okay maybe this is a part of of what i want to do and and maybe let's explore these other things that i'm interested in so yeah that's like a a whole thing i think we should all make time to reflect and and review the 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 game that we're playing in life because too too much of the time you see people quote unquote winning and then realizing like that's not the game that they wanted to play in the first place they're not happy with like you know uh the whether it's the money or whether it's like the the relationship or whether it's you know the job or something like that you see this all the time people going into banking and going to work at like facebook and google and stuff like that after like a couple of years they're like yeah this this is not that lit anymore um <laughs> where some other people who had better reasons they they're they're much more aligned i yeah. think alignment is such a key term it's funny like i learned this from veda actually at, at ala he talks about like the whole process of alignment that's like such a critical theme for uh just living a happy, happy and uh, effective life as well so if you can yeah. align your actions with your motives that's uh, that's, that's it okay. that's it and and nobody's taking the time to do that we just talked to a friend ian who his advice for that is like take a day take 6 yeah. hours sit down get all your electronics away and take a piece of paper and sit down and answer why like why am i doing this he was like we spend 3 hours figuring out our our call of duty class and like the exactly. guns we want to use online but we don't sit down for 30 minutes and figure out why we're like doing something that should be an entire uh class 
Exactly. Think, well, what's oh, interesting oh, re- really quick is just how you say Optar with uh, you guys realizing that, uh, you know, other countries, they did better than you in the science Olympiads. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, okay, uh, you know, you start to question this route but often when you're winning or even you're just complacent like there's no big issue you're not going to make that change and really start to question some of the deeper questions of of why and uh i know you like farnham street i assume i've seen some references there yeah yeah they have uh i think it was getting to first principles an article there and it's like ask why five times and get to the root of the problem so uh so i think that's awesome would you Oh, one thing before we, before we yeah. switch oh, gears, sorry. there's one resource that I think is very good um, for people who uh, are looking for like questions to ask themselves if they want to like uh, basically introspect more about their life. There's uh, two wonderful books by these two Stanford design thinking professors. Uh, one is called Designing Your Life. So they're basically applying these principles of um, introspection and uh, testing and um, design to how do you live a fulfilled life, both in terms of your personal life as well as your work life? And then there's another book that they came out with that's just specifically about Korea called Designing Your Work Life. Uh, I, I'd recommend both of them. I think that's a great place to start. Um, Is it a duo, the authors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I know. Design um, school professors, I was yeah. there for a parent weekend. My sister was a freshman there. Nice. And I got to sit on a lecture with them. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a class it that they taught and they... T- yeah, kind of they had us kind yeah. of go through this exercise. Yeah. And I remember at one point, um, we were, as a full room of like parents, we were kind of coming up with solutions to get back some of our lifetime. Yeah. I remember I grabbed the microphone and I said like, I'm, I'm, I'm spending too much time on email and I'm going to delete it from my phone. And nice. the parents were like... That, that, that's, Let's go. The, the point was like the, the, the parents in the room were like, oh my gosh you can do that and it, it, yeah. was, it was interesting for me so I, I do want to read that book um but yeah it was funny that everyone yeah. in the room like that was such a foreign thing for them that you could kind of get rid exactly. of exactly they, they were Again, of an older demographic but re- reality um, is uh all the assumptions of reality you can question them there you go is negotiable yeah it's beautiful now because that message is starting to propagate and you know you're, you're not in your little uh your chambers your silos of ways of thinking especially exactly. geographically now yeah. you have Twitter where people are saying these things like crazy. So you, you can hear and read yeah. books on it. Would you then say you, and this is kind of the question I posed, but after say you have an 18 year old, you know, very fresh, impressionable, maybe you give them a class like design your life or something like that. First thing, then from there, like I, I kind of want to leave it open from first principles. That's the idea is it doesn't have to be like a college environment. Yeah. But would you, would you consider maybe like, oh, you just send them to another country, a random country with a bunch of people for a year and like have that? Yeah. Um, I, I remember, I, I do think that like that whole experience of being going away. So there's uh, there's this concept, I'm sure you guys know about this, called the hero's journey, where the hero um, faces some sort of, uh, like so things are going well in, in their life and then they face some sort of tragedy and, and then they have to go away. In Hindu mythology, this is often represented as people going into the forest where they find themselves and they confront the demons and then they come back to their, their kingdom and then they, they beat the boss and then they're, they're the king again. Um, or they were the prince and then now they're, they're the king. Um, and so I think that like that whole aspect of leaving your home and uh, you know, leaving your comfort zone and all that stuff, that's super critical because I think that's like, um, that teaches people self-reliance and uh, gives them more independence uh, than they otherwise would have developed in your own environments. Because ultimately, like, if you're, if you can detach yourself from, because, uh, because especially in the American context, there's so many of these like stereotypes and archetypes. You have your jock, you have your nerd, you have the cheerleaders, you have these people, you have the people who are into spelling and stuff like that. If you can remove yourself from from that environment where all these labels were previously on you, and you now have an opportunity to reinvent yourself in a in an environment where no one knows who you are. No one knows what you did before. All those labels are now uh, no longer attached to you. You can actually be free and um, reinvent the, the life that you want to live. That's so critical. And I think there's no better means of doing this than moving to a different place. This could be a different country. It could be a different state if you're like in the States. But I do think that that experience, like the UWC experience of like taking you out of your home country and into a foreign country, that is... Um, 
is a is surefire catalyst for growth. Like that's that's definitely would be is, on the list. Is there a way you can think of to do that at a smaller scale for maybe the folks that are on r- route to go to a community college yeah. um, and they're commuting from home? How do you get that same kind of experience of uh, that that hero's journey, but you're still at home at 19 years old? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I don't yeah, know if you to... no, it's a difficult question because I think that, like, again, it's it's all about. I'm of I'm a believer of this principle of finding your own way, and so for me, like the UWC was like my way of doing it. For other people, it means you know moving to a different city or um, maybe uh, testing out something that they. Or, or taking time away from like the, the the path that they were going to walk in life and like stopping. It may mean like taking a gap year for some people. Mm. I do think travel, obviously travel is like a very, um, like when a lot of people think about like, oh, I want to travel. It means like, oh, let's go and like go through to Europe and backpack and stuff like that. But I, I do think like um, service is a good way to do it. That would be like one of the ways that I think is, is, almost universally accessible where, you know, everyone is always looking for volunteers. Everyone is, is always, I think there's these programs that like, if you volunteer for a year, they'll uh, give you housing and yeah. stuff like that. And that's a great way to see different parts of the world, but also uh, to contribute and to help and to give. And so I think that that would be one of my recommendations is like take some time, uh, volunteer at a place for like a month or a certain amount of time. And um, basically like you want to stop, the momentum of your life such that you can re-evaluate whether that direction that you're going is actually the, the right one. We had, uh, I specifically, Dylan, you know him, but we, we knew somebody who like that junior year, your, your critical internship, he yeah. went to Hawaii to volunteer oh, yeah. on a coffee farm and he was sleeping in the farm, you know, camping and uh, they would feed him and obviously they gave him that housing. Yeah. Um, and that was like, he's, he was pre-law. Um, it's just like such a good way to get away. I think yeah. within, within certain bounds, like anybody could do that. Um, yeah, it, I think it, especially like uh, with, with service. And I, again, like obviously everyone's situation is going to be unique to them. But I think that like in addition to um, some sort of uh, journey that you can take, some sort of... Uh, taking yourself out of your, your current environment. Uh, as, as you were saying, Dylan, the other thing I would say is like, try and find and, and start questioning your, uh, your natural strengths and, and try and find your, your gifts in life. And I think that like that whole process of reflection and then, you know, probably have them do this thing called the reflected best self where, you know, they try and build this 360 picture of when they are at their best from the different people that they've worked with in their life. Um, that would be a starting point. And then from there, nurturing and trying to guide their own curiosities. I think that like the ideal college experience or the ideal like educative experience isn't so much uh, a matter of instruction, but a matter of uh, guidance and facilitation, if that makes sense. So it's not about giving them, and I'm not going to teach them anything, but it's more about helping them uh, tap into and, and learning to recognize uh, and follow their own curiosity and the things that are already in their own in their own mind and stuff like that. Um, it's a difficult question. I think that like this whole matter, I, I want, it's funny that you brought this up because this is actually a question that I think is one of my 12 like favorite questions um, in life. And I think that like education, well, my first, the first company that I started was uh, education nonprofit. Actually, when I was at Princeton, uh, we were teaching a uh, young woman in South Africa computer science, so programming, uh, and also teaching them optimal learning techniques. So these like ways that you can um, essentially uh, learn things faster and like have these learning techniques that you can apply, not just to computer science and programming, but to other subjects that they had in school. And so that would be another thing, like learning how to learn, like all these meta principles about like finding your strengths, learning how to learn, learning how to learn anything. Um, Public speaking and communication would probably be another thing. I think that like, and this is what brought it home for me, your ability to uh, do things in the world is limited by your ability to articulate them in your own head. If you can't describe Mm -hmm. something to another person, um, 
it's uh it's it almost doesn't exist in a way yeah like it almost like it's there but if you can't and oh that's a beautiful thing in some ways but in terms of like practical stuff this is why like selling and pitching and entrepreneurship is very important because if you can't paint a picture to another person um it's very difficult for them to understand where you're coming from and the, the people who can more closely articulate uh where their words are matching the things that they want to say and the, their feelings those are the people that i think are the, are the best communicators and again for me this happened by like i i don't accident but like i used to do debating and public speaking um there's a, there's a funny story where like i was in primary school and i used to argue with my teachers all the time this is the one thing i was notorious for <laughs> i was a good student but i was also like a disruptive student i used to get bored and i'll start talking to my classmates and I argue with the teachers cuz the one teacher would be like oh you can't use this pen I'm like but why why can't we use a blue pen why do we have to use a black pen and so um then she basically told me that yo this is uh, this is my classroom um if you want to debate go and join a debating club and so when I went to when I went to high school <laughs> like, I was like this right. debating club I'm like this is my place like this is this is a place for me um but I think that whole thing about communication and whether it's like written or spoken or I don't know there's I think like that's super important. Um and then uh, but, but basically what I was saying is that this whole idea of like education I think is a a problem that I want to tackle perhaps later in life once I have my own capital to play around with because one thing I found doing this education nonprofit is that most of the time being a nonprofit CEO or nonprofit head is just like grant writing and applying for funding and i was like this process would be a lot easier if i just had my own money you don't have to spend the time yes. writing grants and i can do whatever i want with it and i can test it in the way that i want and so i think that that's uh in maybe 20 years or so i might be doing that who knows we'll see um but i think now that whole idea of like nurturing kids um natural curiosity so there's a the guy that the guy that i like a lot his name is Josh Waitskin He is a I was about um, to mention him when you were done talking to so Oh nice. <laughs> yeah, but he has this whole idea of like you want to cultivate the ability to listen to your internal music uh and children are naturally curious and they naturally want to learn things and each people each person will gravitate towards different things and the more you can not block them in that process and the more you can help them because a lot of people are like at a young age they might be interested in something and then their parents or their uh friends or something might say ah you know like this dance thing is silly or this other thing is silly like you should be focused on practical things and i think that like there's there's a means of like taking this natural curiosity and just letting it flow and like guiding it along the way um that i think is one of the ideal uh like themes for education and like how you do that is a uh, is another question mm-hmm. 